No, don't worry, you're not going death. At least I hope you're not. So sadly the GoPro decided not to record any sound today for the first part of the video, which is a bit annoying, but it is what it is. So you can see me here attempting to say hello. So hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Garage Tales. Hope this might be helpful for someone. So here I am rebuilding the master cylinder on the rear brake on this 2000 F650 GS. So I'm taking the metal clip that connects the brake pedal to the cylinder itself out. Disconnecting the brake pipe. Taking the bolts out, just a couple of bolts on the cylinder itself and one more for the reservoir. That's it, we've got the master cylinder off. I'm just going to put a plastic bag over the brake line, just, uh, just to prevent any brake fluid from dripping on the frame or anywhere else. So I've got the master cylinder on the bench here and first thing I'm going to do is give it a bit of a clean. It is a bit muddy, the bike is used off-road so definitely needs a bit of a clean before we take it apart. probably saying something important here, but I can't quite remember what it was. It must be related to the fact that if for whatever reason you've got debris or corrosion or anything in the cylinder itself, if the piston cannot return fully to its position, the cylinder would not release pressure from the system. So that's why you might get a rear brake caliper binding and you think that's the problem, but it's actually coming from here. There's a tiny port right in front of the piston when it's fully backed up which releases the pressure back into the fluid reservoir and if the piston just cannot return just a tiny bit and it blocks off that port it will always maintain pressure and here we have the instructions about a, about a Brembo kit the cylinder and the caliper are both made by Brembo so it made sense to get a Brembo kit this one's supplied by Motorworks you can see there the part number if you need it and the kit is nice, all the parts seem good quality, it's all there, it's very good. And also the instructions are quite comprehensive, there's a lot there, a lot of languages and quite a nice diagram showing all the parts of the master cylinder and how it goes together, it's really good. And we've got the sound back, isn't that great? So the piston actually looks fairly clean. There's none of the corrosion or debris I was expecting. Don't know if you can see that, there's a pretty big scratch there, but that's my fault. I've done that while trying to pull it out. I wasn't particularly careful since I'm going to replace this anyway. But apart from that, there are no obvious signs of trouble. So the way this works is that uh, the piston, or this side of the piston, slides in this bushing, which is, I don't know, maybe nylon, delrin, or some, some other material. But the ceiling, or this seal here, runs in the bore of the body of the master cylinder. So we could have some issues there, which we're going to check in a bit. But yeah, these two run just fine. Now, if you look in there, it's very interesting. You can see a few black spots on the walls, almost like debris or something, which could be the cause of our problems. So here we are, I've got everything as clean as I can, and it's time to put it all back together.
gonna put the diaphragm and the ring back in later. Just gonna put the cap on now. And there we go, ready to go back on the bike. I did put a bit of copper grease on these bolts. The reservoir one was especially rusty. Can attach the pedal back on now. There probably is a torque setting for these, but life's too short. You just couldn't let it go, could you? Now I don't have the right torque wrench for this application, but this should be tightened to 18 Newton meters. And that's it, we're done. All I have to do now is bleed the brake system. And I'm gonna do the front one as well, so they both have fresh fluid. Hold on, I nearly forgot. One last thing to check before we move on is the brake pedal play. So you see there's, there's a bit of play there, and there's supposed to be a bit of play. If you have too much play, it's obviously not very good. If you, if you don't have enough play, or actually keep constant pressure on the piston, then you may never release the the pressure in your braking system, which would cause your rear caliper to bind. So, the the Brembo rebuild kit instructions specify a play of one millimeter. BMW manual specify a play of 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters. So, thereabouts then. Let's aim for one millimeter. But this looks a bit excessive. So I've got a steel rule. I'm just gonna put it against a fixed point and see how much it moves. So that's about two mil there, two mil, two and a half, which is not as bad as I thought. So we're just gonna loosen the nut. And we're just gonna thread the rod out and check again. There we go, that's about right now. Let's check one more time. That's just perfect. Give everything a wipe. Job's done. pouring some brake fluid in the reservoir here and if I just squeeze the hose it's going to push out some bubbles and fill the hose and part of the master cylinder with, uh, with fluid before I start popping the pedal and here you can just uh, just about hear the fluid dripping out I'm just trying to get to the front master cylinder now, just so I can flush those brakes. Make sure it's got new fluid as well. Yeah, it looks like it's been in there for a while.
Now here I had a really good shot showing the old dark fluid being pushed out and gradually replaced by fresh fluid, but either I forgot to press the record button or the GoPro failed again. So I should have had this video a bit better and nicer made, better thought out, but I'm still learning how to film things, so anyway, it is what it is. Hope it was helpful for anyone, and uh, maybe we'll have a better one in the future. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.